Welcome to Medium Inc. I am Orlando from 94th Be The Shark. I am with my psychic medium friend, Jeffrey Wands. After a week off being busy once again, where were you this time? Florida. It's kind of a big state. Would you like to elaborate? I was in Melbourne, actually, doing an event for a ladies' organization who um, are widows of police officers. We actually have to talk a little bit because you have an event going on February 8th for a charity yes. that I hold near and dear to my heart, yep. which we will be talking about in quite some time. But we do have a very special guest joining us today. It's interesting because we've never done it this way before. Uh, just having Jeffrey and I, the two of us in the studio is odd, but we are joined by a guest. Psychic medium Jay Lane is with us, and this is our very first international Medium Inc. Uh, good evening. No Jay, where you are, is there a time difference? No, actually, I'm in the Eastern time zone, so it's, it's great we're in the same time. What part of Canada are you in? I, I'm in northern Ontario. You know where the bugs are a little bit bigger than I am, but I'm in northeastern <laughs> Ontario, which is sort of like about four, four hours drive northeast of Toronto. Okay, now Toronto is obviously where the Blue Jays play, but they had that Sky Dome there for a while. As a wrestling fan, there were some major events. Is that still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The Sky Dome is still there, and so we have a lot of games that go on there. And, uh, yeah, my dad was a big wrestling fan, so I used to go to the wrestling matches like, you know, Andre the Giant. And, you there know, you go, the, right? You're, you're, speaking, you're speaking his language. Jay, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You said you were married, correct? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I used to like going to the wrestling match with my dad. The Ultimate Warrior was my favorite, and there was a famous match there. It was him against Hulk Hogan, and I will never oh, yeah. forget the Sky Zone because uh, the uh, Sky Dome because of that. Yes, that's right. But you know what? The Sky Dome is beautiful. It's right close to the CN Tower. It's uh, you know, it's it's right on Front Street. And it's beautiful. Union Station is there, and it's it's gorgeous. You have all of these huge, um, beautiful golden statues sticking out of the Sky Dome, and the hotel in there you get to see like in the middle. But it's really cool because they have skylight rooms, and it's cool because you're laying there and you got like the skylight. You can see the freaking CN Tower. It's so awesome. I love it. Is that the hotel that's attached to where the Blue Jays play? Isn't there a hotel yeah. where you can stay and watch the game from your? Absolutely. That's right. You can. And, and it's great. They have restaurants in there. They have everything. But yeah, and it's a really kind of cool hotel. I stayed there, um, you know, when I went to see some friends of mine play in Toronto. So it was awesome. So now, Jay Lane is our, is our guest tonight. She has a musical career and also a psychic career. Now, you and I were talking before the podcast started about numbers and things like that. We have yeah. some things in common because both of our mothers were psychic. You are, again, I know that there are psychics, there are mediums, there are all kinds of things. We'll break it down tonight, but what exactly is your specific skill set when it comes to this stuff? Well, basically, I have all the senses. So I have, you know, the, the clear senses, the clear audience, the clear voice, you know, the clear empathy, all of those things. So in other words, I hear some sense smell. So uh, a lot of people have different senses. Some clairvoyants only see the past, some the present, some see all of it, or just the future. Um, but I've been kind of gifted all of these things. I think I was born this way. My mom was a clairvoyant, and she was a healer. So a little bit different than I was, but my mom, um, I think, was born like that, too. So she, she actually did it as a business in the 60s all the way through to the 80s. When my father passed, that's when she quit. Okay. You said your mom was a clairvoyant. Now, clairvoyant yeah. means you can see into the future? Or is does that... Because my mother was a tarot card reader. Oh, okay. Well, a tarot card reader those will often use their intuition as well and their feelings. Some of them could be like a sensitive, they call them. But a clairvoyant really is, is somebody that has a clear vision. It's like tapping into another consciousness, another frequency to visually see within the mind's eye. So clairvoyants receive visions, they receive impressions in the form of inner sight or images um, that are seen without the use of your, use of your physical 
lies. So it comes from a source that's beyond, you know, the limits of time and space type thing, as you put it. So these could be past, present, or future visions, but some people see better when they're in trance, meditating, you know, um, that kind of thing. Even some people during Reiki, um, they have these types of visions. But and some are able to receive these impressions anywhere, anytime. And my mom was like that. You know, and, and clairvoyants are usually referred to as psychics, and mediums are usually psychics. What would you consider to be your most powerful tool? I mean, I know Jeffrey speaks to Jeffrey speaks to those on the other side. We've spoken yeah. about it in the past, but he's given me advice. Like, does the advice come from the other side? Can they see into the future? Like, how does it work? Oh, Jeffrey's amazing, actually, what he does, because I follow him and I watch his readings. Um, Jeffrey, Jeffrey goes to the soul of things, too, when he connects. And the thing is, when he sees it, he calls it, and that's what I like about him, and he sticks to it. So for me, he's not that too passionate about what he does. Um, with me, I, I connect kind of the same way. Like, you know, Jeff, Jeffrey's really good with them you know, investigations and different things like that. I kind of worked in that type of thing um, before I, I, I quit my job to do this professionally. And so I worked with the police as well, but not at the same capacity uh, that Jeffrey has. I was just sort of like uh, helped out in a few cases. My, I think, thing is to kind of connect people, sometimes even through humor or just through different things to make them see things a little bit differently. And I connect through numbers and food. So sometimes I'll ask somebody, you know, um, I, I'm seeing this number and I see this pattern. So who's in this month, this month, and this month? And I'll give three months. And usually those months are relative or the numbers are relative to something. And uh, then I'll ask if they ate certain thing. And people think like, okay, what does that have to do with the reading? But it has everything to do with it because if I know what you had at 4.30 yesterday, uh, for instance, I was reading for someone one day and I asked her if she had chicken enchiladas at 2 o'clock. And she said, uh, yeah, I did. Right away I knew I was on the right track. So I can connect what I need to say to them when for kind of validate um, certain silly things. So I don't know. It's, it, it just, I guess it depends. But uh, we all have our different ways of doing things because of our gifts. You know? Well, I feel like so, food is a universal language. If you could, I mean, Jeffrey brings in Italian pretty much every Sunday, and we're all I humping know. his leg. I know. I can just imagine, too, because Italian food's like the best, right? <laughs> it is. It's comfort food, and it's like, you know, manja, manja, you know? So I understand that completely. Um, but food does connect people because when you're in a good mood and when you're happy, it's usually around food. Or people gather around food, even around funerals, weddings, births. There's always food and celebration. And the thing is, even desserts are celebrated. So when somebody's eating food, or there's a certain food that was available during a certain time, or, you know, and and person goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what, I just had that this morning, you know. Or I'll say, did you eat, did you get up at 4 a.m. and eat salt and vinegar chips? Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, my God, I can't believe you're seeing that. <laughs> but the thing is, it's because they're around. And, and that's all is true. And when they're around, they're around, you know, so which is really great. Jane, you and Jeffrey do the same thing, but you guys have different techniques. Now, I know you guys yeah. speak often. You guys are friends. Do you yeah. and other psychic mediums uh, consult about how to do things, or do you feel like this is something you're born doing your way and that's it? You know what? Jeff and I have never, never compared notes as to, like, how do you read or how do I read. When I see Jeff doing a reading, I know. He's feeling it. You know what I mean? Because Jeff won't say something if you don't feel it. That's just the way he is. And that's what I like about him. You know, there's integrity and there's sincerity with his readings. Um, and I don't get that from a lot of people. You know, some people. And he's experienced, of course. And he's been feeling spirit for a very long time. So he trusts himself. Um, so I don't think there's really a technique. You know, recently I, I did some training with somebody else way back um, last summer, uh, fall type thing, and everybody has a different way of teaching stuff to people. But can you teach people to become psychic? I don't think so. But I think what you can do is you can teach people to trust their gut, to trust what it is that they're feeling, 
so that they go, okay, you know what, I'm not crazy and I'm not alone doing this. Because there's a lot of people that are like this, and I'm sure you've been like this, where you've had a, a gut feeling about something and you didn't do it because, you know? All the time. Like, that's yeah. my life. You've just described yeah. it. I want to yeah. ask you both the same question, though, because, see, you said that you see into the future, and I know Jeffrey has, but for somebody like me, a stubborn Italian male with a head harder than granite, if you mm-hmm. tell me I'm going to do something, I'll probably do the opposite uh, just because. Now, does that affect the way the course of history is supposed to be? Like, do, do you feel you're honestly messing with time, messing with with reality? If you tell somebody, be careful, don't do this, be careful, do that. Like, are either of you ever concerned with messing with the way things are supposed to be? Yes, I think people do. You know, we're always afraid that people may take us at face value because you got to really watch how you speak to people. But... When it comes down to it, and I think Jeff will agree with me, is that when it comes down to doing these things, we're very clear with people. Like, I tell people right away, listen, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not this, I'm not that. What I'm going to talk to you about today is my opinion, and you have the power to change the outcome of anything I tell you because you're the creator. Because really, you're the one that creates your life. Right. And the thing is, if you, you're going to manifest something for yourself, if you're not, you, you know, some people don't manifest it the way they really want. Sometimes, but but you got to watch what you think because sooner or later you're going to get what you're thinking, you know. So the thing is, it may not come the way you want it to, but I do believe that. I think that psychics and medium have the power of planting information, and that's the thing, positive. Uh, to help people also think in a positive way and not planting like in a way that's like um, obscure or negative or like being sneaky. What I mean is, you know, if I see really good things for someone and someone's really been down and I'm going, listen, you know, I know you're going through a, a storm right now, but I'm telling you, within three, four months, I feel so good about your energy and I feel, you know, and it gives them a little bit of hope. Sometimes it doesn't really necessarily happen in that time frame. Because I could have been off a month or so, but at the end of the day, we're here to also help instill that positive when we're feeling it. Or if someone comes through and gives a message, you're giving that person some hope and you're giving that person, you know, that reason to live a little longer and and that hope that they're going to be there when they die. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's really big. you got to watch the way you do it. That's why I love Jeff so much is because um, he does that in such a nice way. Just He just says it from the heart. You know what I mean? You're much kinder than I am because nice would not be the word that I've used to describe Jeffrey only since he's been working with me three years ago because I've hardened him. I've given him quite a bit of an edge. Now, you, sir, are, are more blunt than Jay is, even from the 15 minutes that I've now known her. You say things just complete and, and but I like that. thoroughly. I, I like that. I don't have to <laughs> guess, and I think it's great that he does that. You know what? <clears throat> the thing is, sometimes you can't lead people down the garden path. You have to tell them also the way it is. So sometimes I'll say stuff like that, too. And uh, trust me, we could be pretty, I, I could be pretty funny with my retaliation. But the thing is in a good way. I always like to joke around with people as well. But I, I like Jeff's style. I think that he just speaks his truth. Do you ever get concerned about... I get in trouble. I've gotten in trouble. I'm not going to say to you, not because of you, but because of me sometimes because I'm very direct. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear things, but... You yeah, know, that's right. When you that's do it right. long enough, I'm direct. Certain people want to hear what they want to hear. I mean, I recently had it with a woman. She didn't want to hear that this relationship was not for her, and she's going to keep going to psychics until she hears what she wants to hear. Yeah. Well, that I don't understand. You're just seeking validation. But see, I get angry at, at listeners that will call you guys, not because... I don't think that they have the right to call. Of course they have the right to call. But when they're calling every week, asking for the same things, like, again, my favorite call ever was, will I get pregnant by my husband or my boyfriend? I almost fell off the chair. Yeah, that's that's almost like a joke on the ghetto show (laughs) there. Do you ever get to the point where you've told people to leave or stop readings because they've become impossible? 
Um, just one guy kicked out of my house, actually, because he was drunk. He came here with his mother, and uh, it kind of scared me, actually, <laughs> you know, but I was like a little pit bull, and I stood up to him, and I told him he had to get out of my home, and and he did. He left, and uh, when he started banging on my doors, I just told him, 911, mister, and he, he left. He, he actually apologized the next day, but, I mean, he had had five drinks by 10 a.m. What am I going to do, right? So I wasn't reading for him that day, but I can't deal with that kind of stuff, and I won't. Mm-hmm. So there's, that's about the only problem I've ever had, actually. Um, I had someone faint on me, oh, and that was because they couldn't Because under- they couldn't handle what you were telling them? Yeah, because I couldn't handle what they were telling me. And uh, so that was kind of scary, and I had a lady also pass out, um, fell right to her knees in the grocery store, and... Uh, we we were worried about that too, but um, that she recovered pretty quickly when we told her she had to pay an ambulance. So, but she she uh, yeah she was funny. But those are the only things. Like for me, those were positives because it was uh, you know details they needed, you know, and it was overwhelming. So I understand that. Um, so yeah, I've had a few things like that happen. What makes somebody difficult to read? And then again, Jeffrey, I'll start with you and then we'll get into Jay. But there's different, like, I know I'm stubborn. I know that I put up walls. But what, are there certain personality traits? Are there certain uh, signs, like zodiac signs, that make somebody difficult? No, I think it's just that how people come in. Some people want you to, like, you know, do miracles and stuff. It, it just depends on the personality. I find it to be the ones that are skeptic on this side are easier to deal with on the other side because they're loud and they want it, they want attention. Jay, do you find certain types of people more difficult than others to read? Well, some people don't want to be read and they're afraid, but they'll come to the shows just the same. You know what I mean? So if I'm doing a show and, you know, right away it's like, uh-oh, you know, I see her coming near me, oh, my God, because I tend to walk around in my shows. And so some people are not so open, but... Um, you know, I've had some people where I've told them things and they go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, whatever, and then they come up to me after show and go, oh, my God, um, I can't believe this. But they'll deny everything in public because they don't want to be, you know, vulnerable in front of people. But you know what? I'm okay with that, too. Like, if people don't want to talk to me, then I usually tell them, well, you know what? If you don't, I'll just move on to someone else because I'm not going to waste my time with somebody really that... That doesn't want to. I've and had they're ruining people, it for everyone. Well, it's just, you know what? Don't pee in everybody's cornflakes type <laughs> thing. If you don't like it here, don't poop with the potty. Like, just move on and, you know, and, and go somewhere where you can go complain about things, whatever. But I've never really had that happen in this show. I, you know, I had one guy that was really angry. And when I finally channeled through his dad, as, as I guess your language you would understand, when his dad came through, he knew damn well that was his dad, and there was no denying it. And he came to see me after, and he said that the weight of the world on his shoulders had lifted, and he had carried this for like 30 years. And and in a show is where he let it go, but sometimes that's what happens. It takes to take off that Band-Aid for the pain to come through and for them to admit, like Jeff says, you know, for them to go, okay, you know what? Yeah, that was me. And skeptics are difficult because they don't want to hear it or they've already got their mind made up. And I'm okay with that. I'm a big skeptic myself. Um, I've had all kinds of readings. So some people I think, wow, that's an amazing reading. And some people go, meh, you know. Well, Jeffrey but hates every is- single medium, like, here. Like, he, he that's doesn't... Not <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. You know what? He he's he's probably opinionated like I am. Um, the thing is, I do have my opinions, but the thing is, I would never cut up a, a fellow light worker. I don't think it's the right thing to do personally, but that's me. You know. Well, how? Do, um, okay. So, what would you look for in a fraudulent? Like, like, what are some of the signs? Like, are there certain questions that that con artists will will go for? Like, have you picked out con artists in the past? Well, I, I went to see a lady that people had come to see me that was the complaining. They were complaining about her. And she was saying that people were going to die in accidents. And and uh, this was many, many years ago. So I decided to go myself, throw on a baseball hat, you know, 
And uh, when I went there, she she immediately asked me for sixty dollars, so I gave it to her, mm. and then she proceeded to tell me that uh, I was going to die within five months of stomach cancer. However, she could help heal, heal me, um, you know, for six hundred dollars mm. for uh, yeah yeah. So I asked her where the nearest bank machine was, but honestly, I felt like telling her to bend over because <laughs> I wasn't swiping my card at New Interact, you know, for six hundred dollars for her to to make me any potions. But you know what? The police, um, in cases like that, you know, they tell people to fire beware. So it's unfortunate because you have a lot of people that are unethical or that don't practice properly. That um, that give everybody else a bad name. There's a lot of freaking good mediums on this planet, let me tell you. Yeah, but how is, like, how is that technically illegal? Like, would the police even be able to do anything about that? Because no, they y- can't. You're falling they, for it at that point. Yeah, yeah. You know what? There used to be some kind of witchcraft, um, you know, old type of law, but does it hold up in court now? I mean, that's so outdated. Uh, but at the end of the day, no, it's a buyer beware. So, you know, the only time they can really do something is if they're extorted for money, led to believe that there's a game type thing. So it's like extortion. So there was, I believe, uh, some psychics that I had read that had extorted, I think, 60000 out of somebody. And, uh, yeah, that person was charged, but I'm glad. You know, because that's terrible to sure. take advantage of somebody uh, that's vulnerable like that. You know, um, I don't know. I, I have enough confidence. I don't need people to come back for a second reading. If, if you know, if they're not happy with me, I gladly recommend them to somebody else. But like I say, you know, if you're just yourself and you are who you are, you shouldn't have any problems. They don't take it face value, no matter how you come through. We are hanging out with two renowned psychic mediums obviously psychic medium jeffrey wands is this is medium inc which we do most sundays at 5 30 on 94 3 the sharks facebook and we have canadian psychic medium jay lane with us as well now jay i know when it comes to jeffrey he'll always see my grandfather like like that's the go-to like my grandfather's always around he's always busting my chops Are, are there certain constants with certain people where no matter what, no matter how many times they come in, there's a, a constant that's always there before you can get to anything else? Yeah, there are some spirits that are recurring spirits so that are attached to certain people. You know what I mean? Sure. So, for, for instance, um, uh, I believe that anyways. My grandpa is attached to me. He died in 52. I wasn't even born yet. Okay. But that, that energy is always around me, and I know it's him now. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't know who it was because I, I had no clue who he was. Um, like with you, I, I don't know if it's a grandpa, but you have a 261 feeling to you. What's two, six, that one, mean? But, well, two, it's just that numbers. I, I kind of connect with numbers. So when I felt around you and I said, what's your first name? It's like I was feeling Orlando. <laughs> and the thing is, um, the thing is, BKs or Ts are number twos. Okay. Okay. Right? So the thing is, I was feeling like an energy of two, so February and November, birthdays, anniversaries, passings, or numbers equaling two. So it could be the second of any month, the 11th of any month, the 20th, or the 29th. So my father is Mm -hmm. November. Yeah. Um, Has to be. 11, when it comes to astrology, I was told that I am an 11. I'm a double digit. I'm an 11. I see a master number, so that's a go-getter. But the thing is, you have to have a February or November, and the reason why I see November is one plus one is two. Then, you know, when I see the six, that would be either, um, that would either be, you know, the June. Six is me, I'm a Gemini, June 16th. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and June has to be connected to that, too. Two sixes and one. And, and June is also, uh, it's not June, the month of June. Um, it would be the uh, the sixth, the fifteenth, or the twenty fourth of any month, and there's other dates that play into that. Okay. Okay. And then if I go out from there, if, you know, then I the one, a one for me is January or October, because there's one, one plus zero is one. Right? Okay. Or the or the first, the tenth, the nineteenth, or the twenty eighth of any month. So I. Feel that numerical pattern around you. That's cash crackers. That's just the way to come through. 
So I have someone like around you that died really freaking fast. So the thing is, yeah. it's, it's, it's not a like a slow, like I'm dying, or just like, holy shit, what the hell happened to me? You know? So I get that like surprise, surprise. I just had my soul like just thrown out of my body. And uh, I had not seen some guy like this for the hell. So that's the biggest one around you. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you just noticed my best friend that passed when I was 18 on a, in an accident. Yeah. Do you remember when he passed? June 18th, 1996. Yeah, June has to be. So, well, two, six, one. The yeah. accident was the 18th. He passed on the 26th. Yeah, doesn't matter. This is June. So it's either June, which is the sixth month. Or numbers equaling six, six, fifteen, or twenty-four. He's tattooed on my arm. It was probably the most profound moment of my early life. Yeah, but he was thrown out of his body. So for me, blunt force trauma. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, because like for me, he doesn't. He didn't plan on dying that day at all. You know. I would hope not. No, I keep on saying ten to three, and ten to three can also be uh, nine, uh, nine twenty. So I don't know why I keep on seeing those times. So ten to three. Okay. So I don't know why I see those times, but I'm seeing that. If it's not ten to three, it would be nine twenty. Nine twenty. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, in my life, there's been many passings since, so... I, wow. I just gets... leave that one there. What's his name? My friend that passed in the accident? Yeah. Rocky. Oh, okay. And um, is that his real name? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was his real name. He had a, a big ponytail, and he was a freakishly strong kid. Oh. Well, you know what, though? He's around you all the time. And, and like, the thing is, quite often, so you must have a lot of conversations with him, in, even inside your head, or you ask him for a lot of favors. And i got to tell you that straight up. <laughs> and so that's not a bad thing, you know? I've asked him for a few, but I do talk yeah. to him all the time. Yeah, you do. And sometimes inside your head, I don't know, that's the way I get it. Oh, I keep on seeing a leaky... Um, like, uh, did somebody have like a roof that really uh, that caved in or something, or a roof that uh, had mold or like water come through? That's me. That's Jeffrey. That was my house. That's, yeah. that's your house, Jeff. Yeah, that was yeah. the thing with the interior. I'm still going through it. Well, mine too. I moved out of my house because of mold. Yes, but she's talking about we had it coming from the inside. Yeah. So, oh, um, okay. th that's where I had the insurance claim. So. Oh, okay, so for mold, though? It was for mold, and it was for water, and it was for water damage. In fact, okay. uh, it's still going on. So. Okay, yeah, but for me, there's no reason why that should be. So I Tell think there it. was admin an administrative glitch there. Oh, yeah, um, on their part, but you think, and since yeah, you brought yeah. it up, am I going to be done with it finally? Because I can't take much more. Oh, yeah, I think you are going to be done with it. But Good. the thing is, it's like that administrative glitch. I hope they picked it up already. Yeah, um, they screwed. Well, yeah. what happened was the one person we had that was doing the contents, she went out on leave and everything got screwed up and a new guy took yeah. over. So that's, yeah. that's one okay, problem. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, but the thing is, I think they're going to put a rush on it then if they found it. Because they just made me feel there was some kind of big administrative glitch, you okay, know? Good. And that okay. really slowed things I just down want, for I just you. want to be done with it, that's all. I feel yeah, like I'm on I think you'd be done. Yeah. Yeah, I think you'd be done. But um, just to let you know, Orlando, if you had mole in your house, someone's just showing me, like, black mole. Like, it you was know what black I mean? mole. That's, that's, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We both and the thing. Yeah, and I don't know if you have, like, a K name around you, like Kevin, Keith, Kyle. <laughs> you know, but they Kevin, talk Kevin. Yes, Kevin gave birth to him. <laughs> You've got to tell who Kevin is. Come on. Okay, well, there's a couple. So this is a male K? Yeah, it's Kevin, Keith, Kyle, like she that kind of thing. Kevin. Okay, well, so Kevin, I I'm a really big fan of a band, and I get teased all the time because... My f my favorite singer, his name is Kevin, but he's also one of my closest friends. I mean, he's like an he's a like an older brother to me, and mm -hmm. I always like I've always felt like in a, 
when I really need advice, he's the guy that I go to. Yeah, yeah. Totally but you're talking about being he around that. What's his name? Kevin? Oh, Jay, his name's Kevin. You're into music. It's the lead singer of Candlebox. Candlebox? Yeah. They I were. I'm, who are they? They I were a Seattle so band from the early 90s. They're still around today. They've been okay. my favorite band since the moment they came out. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to check them out. Yeah, Kevin gave birth to Orlando. Jeffrey busts my chops on this every day. So for you to be okay. like, hey, sound, I'm like, here we go. <laughs> well, the thing is, they talk about Kevin, Keith, or Kyle, and they make me feel less important around you. Okay? okay. So, yay. I keep on seeing some sandwiches, too, like, you know, um, you know, Mr. Submarine or, or uh, like, Subway or something. Okay. So I, I keep on seeing that. For me, if it's not Subway or if you just didn't have sub, it's chocolate chip cookies. That's so me. somebody, I yeah? Love, I love chocolate chip cookies. Oh. Yeah, but you must have been just eating them recently. No, I won't. actually, somebody brought them from a reading that I did for someone. They yeah. Brought, and I'm okay. trying to lose weight, which is not the best thing, but okay. it was very sweet. She made her own, and she said, I made them special for you. Oh, uh, okay, but they make you feel these cookies are important, or you bought these cookies, or you ate them. I but ate even them. if you didn't eat, oh, did you? Okay. Yes. But they make you feel like chocolate chip, though. Oh, yeah, okay? they were chocolate chips. She brought me yeah, chocolate yeah. chips. I well, in some ways, there's only chocolate chip cookies that I eat <coughs> by other, other restaurants, different mm -hmm. types of cookies. But this is, like, specifically that. And I don't know if it's just, like, within the last three days, but they make me feel grateful for that. So there's a mail coming through for that. That's really happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Orlando, I don't know if you have, like, a rear ender, but they're laughing their asses off. Rear ender? <laughs> Like a rear render, like, you know, an accident where you bump somebody in the back end? No, I just got backed into uh, yeah, two weeks ago. I've been driving a rental car. Well, Rocco's, Rocco's yeah. laughing at you. You got rear-ended. Yeah, but in the rear end, they're talking about the rear render. She backed it. It was the side of my car. It was the back of hers. Yeah, but they're all laughing room. upstairs at you. Okay, so your friend was with you. <laughs> but you're he's laughing at you. You were freaking pissed off. <laughs> It was right after he he had we had done the show and he was in the parking lot. Yep. Yeah, but they're laughing about that. But that's got to be less than a month, anyways. But yeah, there's a big joke about that. <laughs> so someone's watching over you. So my friends are having a laugh at my expense. Yeah, they are. They're pretty funny, actually. The one is really funny. You know, Jay, the thing about my friends, and losing them has always been tough because I didn't exactly have the most traditional childhood. My friends were my family. We were sort of like the outsiders. We all pretty much watched each other. So, you know, you telling me these things, are it's very enlightening, but also reminds me of just how close we all were. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? They're around, they're around you all the time, you know? But you must have been cursing hard because... <laughs> yeah, I hear it. <laughs> well, it's she... the rear end, though. That's the thing. It's, it's got to be in the rear end of your car. It's not in the front, you know. Well, yeah. So, yeah, back end. It was, mm -hmm. it was the back corner. She backed yep. into the back corner of my car, yep. and yep. then tried to deny doing it. Yeah. No. No. And it that's happened. when I flipped out. It happened. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> that everybody thinks it's funny. <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> I, but see, okay, so obviously you would mentioned that there are a few people around and things like that. So, like, in my mind, I'd like to think that all my friends are, like, at a bar somewhere hanging out. Like, how does it work? Like, do do spirits meet through you for the first time? Like, Like, how do they come together? Like, are all my friends just running around doing what they would do if we were in the neighborhood? Yeah, they actually are. It's almost like they're still around. So, see, the other side is, like, right in front of you, two inches in front of you. Okay. okay? So the thing is, at the end of the day, it's it's we come from a different consciousness altogether, and we live on three levels of consciousness right now. Your conscious being, your subconscious being, your unconscious being. And the thing is, if you close your eyes and you see your dead friends in if you visualize them, Every that's day. because they're around, and that's where they are. That dream world, whether you're awake or whether you're aware, 
you know how we daydream? We may dream the same. A lot of people say, oh, Jay, I don't, I don't freaking dream. Yeah, everybody dreams. We daydream, we night dream. But the thing is, sometimes we don't remember those night dreams. But the thing is, if you've ever dreamt of dead people, it's because you're actually visiting them. So it's just really another consciousness. And the thing is, they don't have an ego when they go through to the other side. So they're happy. They don't have any mad, sad, bad anymore. They're just like vibrating at a very high level. They could be in a million places with one thought, just like a sun ray, you know, could be in a million places and there's only one sun. And the thing is, they're having fun. They they just, it's like living in a, in a euphoric dream. It's like freaking amazing, you know. If we all knew what it was like to be dead, we'd all want to be dead. It's <laughs> terrible, but it's true. <laughs> we'd, all, we'd all want to be dead. Nah, I feel like I still got some stuff to do here. Oh, yeah, yeah you another not ex-wife. I, at least yeah. one more ex-wife. Jeff, Jeffrey yeah. loves that. I've only had two and a half. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you freaked me out. When oh, you said God. K, you freaked me out because I thank God you went to the male side because one of my ex-wives has a K. Has a what? Has a K name. And I was like, uh-oh, here we go. But you No, but you're going to be attached to that because Ks are twos. So Bs, A, B, second letter, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K is 11. One plus one is two. Hello. Okay. You're always going to be tied to that. K is going to be hugely important to you. And so is the number six or uh, 6, 15, or 24, or June. So okay. birthdays, You said 6, 15? Yeah, 6, 15. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, God. So the last time that I ever saw my best friend was June 15th, 1996. Yeah. He had the accident it, three days later. Yeah. We don't dwell on the accident. My friends and I, every single year, celebrate, or especially me, on June 15th. The, the year to the day that he passed, Black Sabbath got back together for the first time. We were at a Nazi concert when he passed, or the, the, oh, yeah. the last time I saw him. And I always felt that that was like a sign, like, because at that show, Ozzy said, I'll never get back together with Black Sabbath. A year to the day, he did. And we all honored him that day. We kept, we kept the seat empty and everything. And, um, yeah. So yeah. June 15th, that's crazy. Yeah, 6, 15. Well, 15 is, uh, it's 1 plus 5 is 6. So there's a huge 2, 6, 1 to you. In the January or October... Or six, uh, or one, ten, nineteen, or twenty-eight. That I would have and to think about, but yeah, I mean, so That's far okay. you, <laughs> you, so far you were dead on. Yeah, but you know what? You, you you've got a lot of energy around you, and you have somebody that had cancer, either had it twice or uh, was sick twice, you know, with a disease of some kind. I've got, like, it's been bothering me for, like, the last 10 minutes, but I don't want to talk about it. Um, but I have that, too. But your biggest one is the one that I forced out of his body. So blunt force trauma or an accident of some kind. Didn't plan on dying. Happened a, a number of years ago, I think. And they talk about twos and sixes and ones. 24 so, years ago this year. Yeah, 24 is a six. Okay. It was, six, uh... 15, 24. Yeah. Yeah, it was 1996. Yeah, yeah. But he looks better than you, though. Uh, yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. So that's, uh, you know. So for me, he took an early exit. And the reason he took an early exit is this is a guy that didn't want to be sick with cancer. Rocky? The one that died in June. Maybe he was afraid that he was going to be sick. Yep. So the thing is, it's not that he killed himself. It's just that he took an early exit. His soul decided. I rode on that motorcycle like it was. Yep. He just he had no fear. Yep. But the thing is, he did not want to die of cancer or be in a hospital surrounded by people and suffering. So he took his first exit. And a lot of people will they'll decide, okay, that's it. You know, if this happens, like in an accident or whatever, I don't want to survive this. I, mean, you know? I think about him every day. He'll always be my best friend, and you know, yeah. kind of cool yeah. that he came through, or you yeah. picked him out, or whatever you people do. 
Well, he's just around you. I don't have a choice. He talks a lot. <laughs> you know, he just talks a lot. So that's a good thing. Uh, but, yeah, so that's kind of how it works for me. I just tell you what I hear, what I see, what I sense, what I smell. And Jeffrey's the same. He just, like, tells you what he's getting right away. And yeah. well, Jeffrey loves to relay messages from my grandfather. That's his favorite thing. Oh, yeah. Thing. <laughs> well, you know what, though? Two meetings will be Things. It depends on what he's sensing. So he could be feeling something totally different from me. And then there are some mediums, like the psychic friends, they can zone in on the same uh, on the same energies, you know, which is amazing. So, and not everybody does, you know. You might have two mediums work in a room and one totally not picking up what the other one is. Have you ever and, done that? Have you ever worked with other mediums? Yes, I have, actually. So it's been great. How does, I need to go up to Canada and work with her. I'll it's, fly yeah, with you. I want to see yeah. that. That would be a lot of fun to do the that with. The thing her. she just nailed was she got the day last day that I saw Rocky alive. That's ridiculous. That's good. It's <laughs> that's crazy. That, that just means he's around. Oh my god! Exactly. I know, but uh, I know. You, well, that's a good thing. It's a, it's a great look. It's a it's a great thing, but that just blew me away. Like. I know there are people that are skeptical, and I know that there are people, myself included at times, but like if, if you're watching this with any skepticism, I want you to realize that she pulled a date that would be impossible to get any other way. Because like, I've spoken about his passing before. I've never spoken about the last time I ever saw him and what that date means to me. That's insane. And also because you feel guilty, which you shouldn't feel guilty. Well, that's a whole other story. Yes. That's right. That's between my therapist and I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that goes to the thing. Across, yeah, I have, to ask, you, from, I have yeah. to ask you a question for my my younger son. Because he's a Gemini, too. He's like Orlando. He's the 17th. Yeah. He's 6'17". Yeah. Um, he's, like, really worried about work and business. And I keep telling him it's going to be okay. So if I hear no, it you're from right. you, you know. You're, you're right. He worries way too much. Like, yeah. does he always worry like that? Yeah, he's very. he's like me. He's very sensitive. Yeah, but I mean, excessively sensitive, I would think. And um, I don't know if he had a disappointment with a job where either he just quit it too early or he was let go. Um, but I think that kind of holds him back a little bit. So they do make me feel that he's going to have better things ahead, sure. but he needs to start believing that. And I actually think he's going to make a little bit more coin, too, which is not a bad That's thing. That's what he wants. He's in real estate. He was just a little Good for him. Yeah, he was a little yeah. frustrated. Yeah, tell him not to worry about it. I All see right. some money coming. He's actually coming. boarding yeah. a plane from Vegas as we speak. Because oh, he was good. with my other son, and he okay. had just texted me from the airport because he knew you were on it. Because I was telling him, like, you're going to do really well. You don't believe me. He is going to do really well. Yeah. It's just that he just needs a little cake start. But I think he's on his way, so I think All he's right, going to do really well. That makes me feel better. Yeah. You see, Orlando, you, you took the color out of Orlando's face. <laughs> so... <laughs> Which is good. That's not a bad thing. No, it you isn't. You know what? It's been 24 years. That's just insane. Of course, because he's there. Yeah. But he's jealous that you came out of Kevin's, you know. <laughs> no, cousin. he's around you and Kevin. Because that K name, like Kevin, Keith, or Kyle, really important for you, Orlando. And the thing is, well, they make you feel like really important. So I would keep that person as a friend. This is a person that's true blue, very, very loyal to you. And somebody that would back you up, Ken. I've got a few. So, I mean, look, Kevin, without a doubt, is like my older brother, and I would trust him with anything. I have another friend uh, who's going through some stuff right now and actually talked to my mother yesterday because of it, whose name is Keith, and he's been a friend of mine since 1991. You might be picking up on him as well. Uh, yep. You know, he's well, he, he lives in another state as well, but, again, both those guys... If I needed either one of them tomorrow or vice versa, we'd be there. Yeah, I wonder if he's the one that had the two or three big arguments. Yeah, he, anyway. he just dealt with a loss. Yeah, but they talk about like uh, divisions or arguments, like three of them. So I don't know what they mean by that when you talk about him. So, Beats me, but uh, look, yeah. Jay, I, I'm blown away if there's... Anybody listening that wants to contact you, because you do Skype, you do phone readings, right? Yeah, I do, actually. How and, does this uh, work? Because I will recommend anybody to you. Not that I don't love uh, Jeffrey. 
Oh, you're sweet. Well, they just have to go to my website, mediumjlane.com, and uh, just go to my services. It's right there. Mediumjlane.com. I will highly recommend this woman to anybody who truly has my tongue tied at the moment. Like, that's just crazy. Jay, we are going to uh, turn it over to Jeffrey in a moment uh, as he does his thing. I can't thank you enough for joining us. Besides the fact that we've had a wonderful conversation, obviously what you just, just did for me is is beyond words can't describe the thank you. So I'll try. Oh, you're very welcome. I'll try to say thank you. But again, one more time, mediumjlane.com? Yes, sir. Jay, I, I would l- eventually, we need to do this again. We need to have you back on because you are absolutely wonderful. Well, if it comes to oh, New York, thank we'll you. have her in the studio. When are you, are you coming here? Well, you know what? I, I may have to. I just uh, I was just actually in New York City not long ago, and um, so I, have new, I have new management in the U.S. Okay. And so I'm actually, my Canadian business is going very well, so I'm expanding now to the U.S., and Jeff's been so amazing because, uh, you know, he, he, he helps me understand the U.S. a little bit more. And, and we've connected. We're actually, we're all souls, I think, in another life together. Huh, Jeff? Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah, like we just right away hit it off and we just feel really comfortable with one another. And he's just like a true blue guy. So that's what I like about him. But, um, you know, I, I'm just I'm just really thankful for both of you, Jeff. Thank you so much for inviting me to be your oh, guest knew you today. Would love it, so. I'm really honored, and I'd do it again anytime. But yeah. I'm hoping to have you as my guest. I as would well. love to. I yeah, would love to. but I am going to be going back because one of my BFFs lives up there, and she's uh, going to be going on world tour again. So I usually uh, try to get a hold of her before she leaves, and so. Um, fingers crossed. I just saw her not long ago, but I miss her because I only get to see her when she's Yeah, you need to come to New York, definitely. Yes, I Jay, know, I do. You touch down at JFK or even LaGuardia or as much as I hate that airport, but that's how blown away. I will be your personal Uber driver, I swear. Oh, oh okay, well, good. <laughs> Probably as long as you don't get back. rear-ended. Yeah, I'll try not to get rear-ended. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. Well, you know what? Your spirit's around you, so I should be able to know before you pick me up, right? <laughs> MediumJLane.com. Jay, you have a wonderful night. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you, Orlando. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. She's the best. Right, damn right she is. I told you. It's good to hear it from somebody else, because you always hear it from me. I know. You know? I know. That just... I know. It made you speechless. At least you didn't bring up your junk. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> All right, so let's, at this uh, point... Let's do some calls. Yeah, we're going to turn it over to Jeffrey, because I'm out. Hi, you're on with Media Inc. Hi, yeah, I was just calling because I saw that Jeffrey Wands was on. Yeah, you have him. Oh, hi, how are you? Good, thank you for calling in. I was just interested in calling. I've watched you down on Facebook feeds, and um, I wanted to see... What you had to say, uh, um, I'm just kind of like okay, taken where, back that anyone where, answered the phone. Yeah. Where is the father figure? Because as soon as you start speaking, there's a dad figure that stepped forward. My my father passed away in January of yeah. last year. Because he's the one that's stepping forward. He's got a good sense of humor. So yes, the, he does. The way he's presenting himself, he goes that as far as he's concerned, you always look beautiful, but today is not one of your better days. Oh, you know what? I didn't get off the couch today. I know. That's why he's teasing you. But he wanted you to know that this was a difficult process for him and that he's not suffering. And once he released, he was okay with it. He he definitely makes me feel that he's very much aware of the family and has concerns with the family. And that would be his way of stepping forward to let you know that he's always with the family. Oh, that's good. All right. But he was teasing you because he said you always look beautiful. Just not today. Yeah, today I had a, a day of laziness. I, I work very hard. I know so. you do. We weren't accusing you of being lazy. You're excellent. It's just, uh. more, it's just more understanding that you have support and that this is his way of stepping forward to let you know, hey, you are my little girl. You'll always be my little girl, so please don't worry so much. Oh, that's so good. All right. And he said even in your off days, you're still beautiful. Oh, thank you. All right, because his pain level was very intense at the end, but he's much better now. 
Oh, good. Yes. You know, I knew that he was at peace. I, I felt that. Yes. Well, you should know because he's always there. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. All right. So this is his way of stepping forward to say, hey, my little girl is great. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. All right. You take care. Thank Have you. Have a great day, home. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Hi, the shark. Uh, hi, you're on with me, you make. <laughs> Whatever. Hey. Hello? Hi. How you doing, hon? You're on with me, you make. Good, how are you? Would you like to speak to Jeffrey? Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> He's right here. Hi, how are you? I am fantastic. How are you? I'm good. It's My God, you're excited. We like that. I never get anyone that gets that excited to speak to me. Oh, I'm really excited. Right. Yeah, usually it's like, Hi. Exactly. <laughs> Help. No, I've been watching you for months and months. I'm so excited. Well, good. I'm glad that you're able to join us tonight. Uh, I'm glad I got through. I've been driving on calling for an hour. <laughs> well, sorry. I always tell people when we do Media Inc., I do the phone calls more towards the end of the show. And since we had a guest and we were talking and the whole bit, this is more towards the end of the show, and then I'm able to do some stuff. Oh, I'm so excited I stayed. All right, good. See, it worked out, so... Now, now uh, you you did tell me in one of the chat messages that I've never met my mother, and you did tell me that she is with me. Yeah, I was actually going to bring her up because she was the one that stepped forward. So she's, like, super, super proud of the woman you became. She says you have her eyes. She feels really, really bad that she did not get a chance to play the role she was supposed to play, but she's watched you grow as a woman, which means that she's super, super proud. That's good. Oh, I got some... She passed away during childbirth? No. No, she gave her. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Understood. So that would be her way of saying, in spite of everything, you turned out amazing. Well, that's good. I'm glad I make her proud. You should. You always have. Now it's your yeah. time to live. Focus on the career. Focus on your next step. Start doing what you need to do. It's about you. Does she see me in a good career? Yeah, you're growing. This is a big change year for you, so take advantage. Okay, because I'm currently unemployed. I'm waiting on a background check. <laughs> well, that's going to go through in, like, the next two weeks. Okay. <clears throat> so keep that yeah. in mind, okay? Very quickly, while I have you on the phone, there there is a number that has been very significant in my life for many years. Mm -hmm. And I recently found out that the number in, in letter form is lost. The number 1022 has been such a significant number in my life, and I don't know why. Well, 22... In numerology, it represents lost in the sense of having identity and purpose. And what the bigger thing for you is more about understanding your purpose. So you would have gone through a period where you had some hiccups and you had some uncertainty, and now you're in a different aspect and you have that ability to be able to move slow and you know kind of find your way, and that's exactly what it is. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. All right, but don't be so hard. Your mom said you're beautiful. You have her eyes. She's, like, very proud of the way you conduct yourself. Well, thank you very much. All right, so don't be so hard on yourself. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. And yes, they sir. do talk about moving, so I kind of get the feeling once you get the career thing going, um, then there's going to be an opportunity to make a move. Okay, because I recently moved. Oh, okay. Then that could be what she's talking about. I I moved to Tennessee in the last two years. Well, that's a good place because I heard it's one of the hotter places. Oh, yeah. Right? There's a lot of opportunity in Tennessee, yeah. hon. You should be fine. Yeah, I'm I'm getting in there, and I'm in school now, too. So well, that's, that's good. You're going to finish the schooling, and you're going to pass the background check. So everything's going to work out good. So just stay the course, okay? Yes, sir. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks uh, for calling into Media Inc. You're very welcome. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you, honey. Have a great night. <laughs> okay. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Hi, there's, Hi. You're on with Media Mink. Hi. Hey. How you doing, honey? Good. Is, can I speak to Jeffrey? Yeah, if you could just turn down your computer, that would be awesome. Got it. Okay. All right. And now you can talk to me. I hear you loud and clear. Great. Uh, well, what can you tell me, Jeffrey? Um, now where, is, where is the health concern? Because as soon as you start speaking, they're showing me something medical in a hospital. Well, I'm not really sure. I'm having some late leg issues. Okay. Well, that might mean that you need to go to a specialist. Okay. Yeah. And it's something you can't let go because it's originating from the, from the back. Okay. All right, not serious. 
but enough that you don't want to ignore it. Okay. I have my, my daughter's wedding coming up. All right. You're going to be fine. You want to be able to dance at the wedding, don't you? Of course. All right. So get, <laughs> get the health. And you're going to be a grandmother because she's going to have a baby fast. Fast? Good. Yeah. Only one or, or multiple? I saw a multiple birth. Oh, that's great. Hun, as coming? somebody with a mom that is on my case still at 41, be happy with one, and if more come, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Listen, I feel like I was born to be a grandmother. You are, you are I, going I, to be. You're going to be holding your granddaughter. So. Oh, yay! And if she has more than one, send one to my mother, please, so maybe she shuts up. <laughs> Not going to happen. I love it. <laughs> Listen, can you tell me anything about my other daughter? She's going through a little bit of a choppy period, but then things are going to actually get a lot better for her. Really? Yep. She doesn't deal mm -hmm. well with change. You know that. Uh huh. Any See? anyone special coming in her life? Yes, there? but she's extremely picky, and she's not over the last relationship. Really? Yes. Okay. Give it time, and things will work out. Okay. Okay. Anything about my husband? No, I wasn't worried with him. It was more right now because the daughter is frustrating you. Yeah. Mm. So just let it be, okay? Okay. Anything from the other side? Well, they were all talking. They were the ones that were talking about when you started speaking, there was a father figure that jumped in, and he was talking about you being a grandmother. Oh, how nice. All right. So you got time to uh, make sure you take care of the health stuff, okay? I will. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thanks, guys. All right. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, you're on with Media Mig. Hello? 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 Huh, are you somewhere outside? No. Hello? Hi, you're on with Media Mig. Hello? How you doing, huh? Would you like to speak to Jeffrey? Uh, yeah, sure. Hey, how are I you? I can't believe I got through. Well, maybe you were <laughs> meant to get through. Yes, I, I sent you a message and you replied about my love life on the, uh, yeah, I was watching live on Facebook. Well, I don't remember, but, you know, I'm just letting you know that uh, things are changing for the better and that you need to be a little patient with this. Okay, okay, that's and good news. And things are going to move the direction that you want. Okay, that's perfect. That's awesome. All right, yeah. because you're not, like, you're rushing the process. I know you want to get settled. I get that 100%. And you absolutely deserve to be settled, but don't get ahead of yourself. Okay. All right. That sounds, yeah, that's exactly right. Thank you. All right. So if you do it in the way that you need to do it right now, you are going to be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Okay. Okay, good. All Thank right? you. And you deserve yeah. to be happy. So this is a process. Okay. Thank you so much. That made me feel great. Thank you. You have to realize that as long as I'm sitting here, anything he tells you about your love life will seem like a cakewalk. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's, that's, oh, yeah, yeah. It's been horrible, so that's good. I'm you know, waiting. He said be patient. Now, I'll say this, not from a psychic standpoint, but when you try to force anything because you're frustrated, it's going to ruin whatever situation might be there. Yes, yeah, I, I get that. It's hard. It's hard in the situation. So It is. It's easy to rush it. It's easy to rush anything, but it won't get you what you want. Yes, yeah, that's true. I, I know. I get it. So good luck, honey, and we will talk to you soon, okay? All right, Dad, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to do one more call before wrapping this up. Hi, you're on with Media Mink. Hi, I got through. How yes. are you doing, hon? Who's this? Hi, guys. This is Stacy. You just responded to me about my mom, actually. How you doing, Stacy? Jeffrey's right here. How are you? Hi, Orlando. How Thank you. How you doing, hon? Hey, Stacy. Hi, Jeffrey. I'm very excited. I feel like my mom is trying to reach me through you. I know that sounds a little bit crazy. No, it isn't. Your mom doesn't need me to reach you. She's with you the majority of the time, which means that it's mom's way of letting you know because of everything that she went through that she's no longer in a difficult place as far as health and the fact that she's out of physical pain. Plus, because you just came through a little bit of like a bumpy period, that's why she's jumping forward. I'm having a bumpy period right now. I'm thinking yeah. that's why. Yeah, well, that's I, why, because you're, you had any you're about to come out of it right now. Okay. Do you know what that means? 
It means that you're in endings and you're starting new beginnings and you've got to put the past in the rearview mirror and not be afraid and you're going to have everything that you want. Do you see any kids? Yeah, that's all part of it. Gender? Um, there's more than one, Mom said. Okay. She was showing me two. She was showing me two kids immediately. Okay, like twins. Well, that's two kids, right? That's two kids. Okay. Your mom's like she All goes. Right. I may be dead, but she goes. I got a better, you know. I'm, I got a better memory with things than you do. Oh, okay. All right. Please so, tell her that I love her and that I miss her. She terribly. absolutely couldn't be more proud of you. She said, "Please don't be angry at me." I definitely had enough over the last three weeks that I was here. Okay. So no, she's always close, okay? Thank you so much. Thank no, you, Orlando. No worries, honey. Listen, you have a good night. I appreciate you calling in. Thank you for being patient. You know, we try to explain it's very difficult to get through if we This could... is the first night I ever found the show. This was like meant to be because it, I didn't even know he did this. Well that's so, because your mother doesn't I'm so want glad you to... I found you both. Your Thank mother doesn't you. want you to give up on kids. You're gonna have babies. Okay. Okay. I was considering giving up, so I appreciate you saying Do that. Do not give up. All right? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Both. Take Bye-bye. care. And that was yet another fun thing. Oh my god. Yeah. So we didn't talk about it. We might as well figure it out now while we're still alive. Angela's house. Well, Angela okay. Yes. Angela's house. Jeffrey is doing an event at Angela's house for Babylon Masonic Hall on February eighth. What is it, five to nine? Yes. And dinner. Five to nine with dinner. I think tickets are seventy dollars. It's a fantastic look. You see the condition I'm in right now. This is the type of thing where if you have any questions, any doubts about anything that happened with anybody that passed away, you want to see one of these things. It's a very, I mean for four hours. That's a, a very amazing price, and the proceeds are going to Angela's House, which is a charity that helps medically fragile children. Something I've been working with for ten years. Eleven. Eleven years. Um, it just, I absolutely love them. And, you know, for Jeffrey to be a part of it means a lot to me. Angelushouse.org. Angelushouse.org is where you would go to purchase tickets. And we'll be talking about it for two weeks. Jeffrey's actually going to be in the day before yeah. the event. No, the thing that I wanted to talk to you about was Sunday. Uh, if you're here, I'd like to be consistent and do the show. But what I'm thinking is we do it at five. It ends at six games at six eighteen. That's fine. Perfect. All right, so we are still doing Medium Inc. next week. Yes. We're just going to back it up to 5 o'clock. This way everybody can enjoy the game. Perfect. All right? Everybody have a great night. Take care. Thank Thank you. you, guys.